What up? You know the motto. Yeah. Pause the bite me. Welcome back. You are listening to another episode of the What's Next podcast, sponsored slash not really sponsored by Inner Bloom, the cold brew coffee elixir. I'd suggest trying the one with oat milk in it as well. We had some of these lovely treats dropped off today by Ollie after he hustled in the DM, as this song talks about at the start, saying, would you like to try my cold brew coffee? And we said, we love someone who's out there having a crack. So yes, we will. And he even dropped it off himself. What a guy. What a guy. Thanks, Ollie. This inner bloom, cold brew coffee, how do you say that last word, mate? Elixir. Elixir, is that how you say that? Yep. E- L-I-X-I-R. We've been helping each other with spelling this week, haven't we? We have. Onyx. Onyx, that's right. Yeah. I didn't even know what an onyx was. A gemstone. Yeah. So we learned. I, I realised uh, that you obviously knew what it was. Have you brought a couple in your time? Uh, no. But are they very expensive? I uh, don't know. Okay. Yeah, I try and avoid jewellery stores these Smart. days. Yeah. Smart. Yeah, married. You know, once you get that engagement ring, it's all over Red Rover. Yeah. You might as well just stay away. Is that the final jewellery purchase you've had to make, or do they keep coming? Nah, because you, you get the engagement ring, then there's the wedding ring, and the wedding ring then is not just the band these days. It's got to have the diamonds in it, because, you know, we could go on about the theory on diamonds, yeah. which you're very, very familiar with. Uh, and then, once you've had your first kid, there's another ring, and if my really? memory serves me co- correctly here, it's called an eternity ring. Eternity ring. Uh, just seeing <laughs> Jade's, it. Jade's, Jade's like, I don't fucking know. Keep yeah. it that way, Jade. Uh, Xavier will be happy to hear that. I thought um, the wedding band was who played at your wedding. So I've got, I've got a lot to learn. Yeah, Adam Sandler. Yeah. Yeah, the wedding singer. Uh, and uh, the e- eternity band thing uh, is pretty much the same as your wedding ring. So in Grace's case, more diamonds, oh. more cash wrapped out by Phil, and yeah, it's it's just blink. No and wonder then, people have to work for the rest of their lives, eh? Yeah, not just to pay off debt, but just to keep those brownie point credits up. Yeah. You know, as I always say, I've always got one foot in the do- uh, dog's box, and, and it's just how far away is the other one. <laughs> yeah, and those brownie points that are always in, in arrears and a negative might get close to break even, but then... I'll do something, admittedly, dumb, Grace knows, and she'll be nodding furiously when she listens to this, uh, going, yep, too right, because I don't think I've ever been in, had a debit balance. Really? Yeah, in accounting lingo. Mm. Hey, well, shout out to Grace, because it was her birthday the other day. It was her birthday on Saturday. We had a bit of a, a leer up down in yeah. town. Uh, it carried her back to the hotel in town. Okay. She no, leave it there, leave it there. The listeners don't want to know what happened next. Absolutely hissed. Oh, yeah, good, good on her. She had, a, she had a great time, but then it turned out to be a COVID super spreader event, Oops. and a number of her friends had come down with the sea bomb. Oh, dear. Yeah, bit of a laugh, but Happens. great night. Hey, what did you get as a gift? Because we were giving uh, plenty of stick around the office to me, looking for a birthday present, but we forgot to talk about what Mr. Romeo over here would have oh, brought. And I bet, Romeo, here we go. I bet that it wasn't small. Oh, part of it might have been. Okay, uh, but the the big one is uh, she's wanted to do a hot air balloon ride. Oh, cute. Yeah, yeah. So she wants to go to Queenstown. Yeah, and go and do a hot air balloon ride. So we'll wait till probably the weather settles, mm-hmm. springtime. And uh, jet down there and uh, go and get high in a balloon. Mate, if I could make a suggestion whilst you're up there, throw her out of it. Uh, I, th- I think you With can. With a cord attached yeah, or I think a parachute? You can, you can do the old um, right. skydive or bungee out of those, apparently. Really? Somewhere in the Because they don't go that high. No, no. YouTube it. Yeah. Have, have you, you not a high air balloon? I'm man? not a, nah. No, like, I'm thinking it's like goes up and it's very serene, it's very quiet and very slow. Yeah, well, there's a risk that with the amount of shit that I talk, the balloon could just never come down because <laughs> it just keeps going. <laughs> it just keeps keep going and going. So, yeah, I could believe yeah, that. that. I'm, probably, I'm probably banned from the old hot air yeah, balloon. Yeah, so that's that's the plan. Oh, that's nice, mate. Well done. That's yeah. a great gift. Yeah. yeah. Won't forget that in a hurry. No, we won't. Get thrown out of a hot yeah, air balloon. My, <laughs> my birthday, but my last big one, that was the old big mm. Q-Town um, trip. Q-Town trip with the, um, the bungee yeah. off that real big... Um, What's the name of that canyon that they do it in? Oh, yeah. I can't remember, but the real uh, real big one. It hit 
bloody worth it. Great hey, memory. Would never do it again. I heard they're thinking, is it the Now Regorge or something? Is that what it's called, maybe? Something uh, Gorge. There's a gorge down there. They're thinking yep. about building a hotel down there. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. More hotels for Queenstown. More hotels. That's what they need. Yep. The, 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 for all yeah. those tourists that are coming in, eh? Yeah, they're back, they're back now. The yep. flights from Australia. I did see that yeah. there was a Qantas plane full of tourists coming to spend their hard-earned Australian dollars here. Yeah, bring it over, people, if you're in Australia. Uh, well, to the topic of the day, mate, today we're going to be talking about the fact that you don't know what you don't know. And this comes off the back of a few conversations with various clients we uh, they've been brave enough to put their hand up and, and get a second opinion or ask a question. There it is, the A word, ask. Yeah. And that reminds me of the book, Ask. Yes. Don't ask me to tell you who the author was. Can't remember, but remember it having a purple cover. Mm. And that's that whole thing. It was like, don't, you know, don't be too proud yeah. to ask for help. So you've just gotten off a phone call with uh, a client who asked you about a vehicle that they're thinking about introducing into their business, yep. into a new business, and they got a pleasant surprise about uh, what they may be able to claim or what GST they might be entitled to back. They did. So the, they've got a, a reasonably high value car. We'll try and keep the details high level. And they were of the view that because it was a high value car, over $100,000, that would be a high-value car, Yeah. just for context for the listeners, um, that, oh, it's not allowed because IRD, nah, nah, nah. And I said to them, look, from IRD's point of view, it's not up to them to question what expenses you incur to make your income. So if you want to be hooning around in a second-hand Ferrari uh, to plim and do your milk run, mm. well, that's on you. Ain't going to be profitable because those things are not cheap to maintain. Um, but hey, look, give it a crack. Uh, and we talked about FBT and all that kind of stuff, but because the company's going to own it, the company will pay for it, you get the second-hand goods claim, Oh yeah, the GST. And uh, when I did the maths on my calculator, because those numbers were too big for my little head, uh, it worked out to a nice surprise for them. So their first GST return that they're going to file, they'll get a refund. Brilliant. All from asking the question. All from asking the question. So if yeah. they didn't ask that because they didn't know, so they didn't know what they didn't know, mm. they would have just probably gone on until someone finally asked the question of them, mm. hey, do you have a vehicle? How come this business doesn't have a vehicle? Surely you've got to do some courier runs for this business or whatever it may be that they need mm. to drive around for. And the accountant, or they would have said yes, and they would have said, oh, well, I thought that you couldn't claim it. But because they've been brave enough to ask the question up front, mm -hmm. then they're going to find the result. So I think... It's a good reminder that if you're sitting on questions that you want to know about from your accountant or your digital marketer or your physio or your doctor or whatever, just hurry up and go and ask the question because mm. you don't know what you don't know. And you'll get to the outcome of where you want to be mm. much faster. We had another client who we met with earlier in the week and the way that they had structured their business uh, they thought was pretty perfect and the layers to which they were paying for for advice and processing mm. around uh, the financial side of the business and we sat there and unpeeled the layers and we're like so what does this person do what does that one do okay then what does this one do mm. and then when we compared it to a very similar client for them and said hey look this is how they do it they sort of leant back in their chair oh really mm. and they're probably spending north of six figures on things that they Six may figures. not yeah. yeah that they may so not that one out on. need but until they've talked to somebody that does know something that they don't know they would have had no idea and and we actually said to them you know what the only thing we feel bad about well not the only thing but we just wish that you came and had this conversation with us two years ago because this is somebody that's been following us online for a while mm. hey yes yeah and they've reached out and we're just like damn you know you, you could be in a much better place yeah because we like to help Yes. So if you've been sitting there listening, thinking, oh, I'll get in touch with them one day, mm. jump on the website, book a call, have a chat. If you don't gel with us, if you don't want to come on as a client, doesn't matter. If you just got a question, we are willing to help. Just a week roundup, mate. That then means we've uh, picked up a fair bit of work this week just by being GCs and helping people. We have. Hey. Yes. Because old mate that came into the office our great office in the CBD for short five minute walk from the viaduct mm. uh, from the great HQ that once was uh, shout out to Leo um, that we just help people we try and they're like you know what on the phone to 
this one that we were talking about the vehicle before and their comments were you've been very helpful that's brilliant i was like well you know it happens we try yeah we try. the other thing we hear every now and then is i've had more i've learned more in this conversation or i've got a more value out of this conversation than i have in the last oh, year or two years from yes. my accountant or my uh, even my digital marketer or whatever we were just talking about things that we've done old mate that was here said exactly that yeah and he's paying six figures in advisors fees sat with us for an hour learned more in an hour than he has in the last however many years he said yeah and and we don't know everything you know we we we've got to apply this as, as well this morning i come to the office and the first thing i wanted to we're show Phil yeah i mean we're trying to learn everything yeah i said look at this tool that i have found which i didn't find uh, it was actually spammed into my inbox and then I got inquisitive about it and thought hmm, maybe there is something here and mm. I watched a YouTube video and then I replied to them and I looked further uh, and it's a way to be able to build a list of different businesses in your chosen industry. You did a bit of due diligence on that, didn't you? Yeah. A bit of inquiry. And I thought, imagine how many clients this is going to be useful for and they're not going to expect their accountant or their business advisor to suggest that they use something like this, but there'll be some of them that are going to sit here and go, I had no idea you could do that. And I'll go, well, neither did I until... Uh, I was absolutely flabbergasted, and I think it's only fair that as leading accountants and business advisors that we test it first. Yes, we will be having a play oh, this weekend. We will be <laughs> having a huge play. Hopefully we can win a client from it, and then we can tell the story of... What we did to get one. Spam works. Yes, maybe. Yeah, maybe we <laughs> should. Yeah, maybe we could use this as a case study of like us hustling to get a new client mm. and see how long it takes and see the, go this, through the steps and then we can uh, use it as a case study for listeners of the podcast. Yeah, if you're listening to this from the Bay of Plenty, just look out. Prepare, <laughs> prepare. <laughs> yeah, from cold email to next advisory client, how it happened. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully we'll see how we go. Uh, there was somebody else earlier in the week, mate, that I thought was in the same boat around the old... You don't know what you don't know, um, but it may have escaped me now. Any other examples of uh, this week alone? No, mate. Drawing, there's drawing some blanks. I mean, it's been, there's been a lot on the go this on. week. The, th the theme is to to just continuously be inquisitive and to ask queries. And we spoke about this a little bit earlier in the week. We are, all of the chat at the moment is about the doom and the gloom. The real estate agent that came and visited us. Gotcha. Hey, hack for people that we came up. Um, if you're using Outlook, when you automatically type in the email address, it doesn't save to the contacts. But then when you type in the email address next time, it automatically populates. Mm. We all know that because at some point in our lives we've used Outlook. That's called autocomplete. Autocomplete. You can download that autocomplete file, and this uh, client uh, pretty much, I would say, wet the bed when they found out because yeah. they had uh, four, seven years ish yeah. of data that they haven't captured. And we've come up with a solution: and go, hey, there's a hack here, and there's a little bit of software that you can install on your computer, and it's going to go through and it's going to read that database of autocomplete and put it into a spreadsheet, and it does work, because I've done it before on a Windows computer, and my word, this yeah. client's going to have an absolute field day. So if context, that client had changed softwares, and they couldn't get access to their old software, and yeah. so in their head they said, oh, I don't have a database anymore, I've lost it. Mm. And we said, how long have you been using Outlook for? And they said, oh, for the whole seven years, and we said, well, we can probably get your database back. Yeah. There's a way to do it, at least to get a big chunk of it back. And the same with Google users, Gmail users. You might think, oh, I don't have a database, but you can actually export those contacts. You can also export your LinkedIn contacts, for instance, as well. You then decide whether you do or don't want to email them mm. um, or what you want to do with that. But it is possible to go back and, and find that data. And again, she said the same thing, like, I had no idea you could no do idea. that. But I, it reiterates the point on our earlier pod on data mm. and just how much people take it for granted and it doesn't matter whether you're a one-man band sole trader or an absolute big smoking business there's going to be improvements in your system somewhere where you can be capturing something that you can ultimately leverage of to help you grow yeah um going back to the old doom and gloom in the economy and whatnot i was telling you how last friday i left here and i ventured down to karaka and went to the opening of the hilton down there oh that's right you did yes i checked in and they said would you like a cookie sir a warm cookie and i thought that's a fucking random thing to offer someone that walks in uh, to a hotel was it like a subway cookie it was better 
Really? It was really nice. Was that the one that Taz was munching on in the Correct. feed? And so I just thought, well, they must have some spare cookies from lunch or something, and they're just giving them out. Mm. And I said, yeah, well, we might as well have one. So we took this cookie to the room, and I thought, gee, that's random. Uh, and anyone that stayed at a Hilton would know that this is common practice. And so when they started doing the spiel about opening the Hilton, they said, well, hopefully you've all enjoyed your, your warm cookie, and it's something that we do across the world, no matter where you go, so that when you it's come an to across a Hilton, the world thing. Yeah, you get greeted with the same experience. And I thought, did you ask for your saucer of milk? I was like, where is the milk I can dunk this into? I just had, I had no idea. I've never stayed yeah. at a Hilton. Um, Nor have I. Yeah, and I just thought, wow, what a bizarre thing to to have. But then... Did it have like some it. branding on it, like an H or something on the cookie? It was in some brown paper, but I didn't really read it. I just yeah, started okay. eating it and it was, yeah, it was actually, it was really tasty. Uh, but I just assumed, yeah, that it was just, you know, a, a free cookie because there must have been some spears. But no, so it was all... If that's the, I think it's the double tree branding of the Hilton. If you're going to stay in those around the world, oh, you're going right. to get greeted with basically the same. A warm cookie. Yeah. So I guess wherever you go in the world, then you're feeling like you are in some sort of familiarity. Would you stay then at a Hilton again just for the warm cookie? Not for and, the warm cookie, but okay. for the experience. Yeah. And I've even had, I've had the classic like, um, how would you rate us out of 10 for the first time I actually did some kind of feedback. So oh, the automated email. Yep. Yeah. But then I actually got a, from the concierge, like, thanks for staying. Like, hi Luke, thanks for staying. We we look forward to for you staying again sort of thing. Because you're a celebrity influencer, mate. They Could want be. you back to do some content. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but what I found uh, inspiring whilst being there is that they built a hotel or yeah, hotel in the middle of a pandemic when mm. everyone's saying the world's fucked, inflation's here, no one's got any money, there's no tourists, but they, and construction costs are going up, and they've steamed ahead with it to complete a vision that they had to over two decades ago to have this. Uh, and I just sat there and thought, like, how do you even know where to start to build a hotel? But mm. then... I'd imagine with a shovel. Yes, I think they use bigger tools than that these days, but there was right. a bloke there, the architect, who had built 17 hotels around the country. Yep. A lot of us had probably stayed in them, in, and you just think, wow, like, I didn't even know that, that was a job. Mm. But that's like, that's been his whole life's work. And then back to our real estate, yeah. real estate agent uh, yesterday, seven years. There's not many people that will stick at a craft for seven years, and now mm. she is doing well in her space and wanting to do better in Hungary, and I thought... Doing very well. I wonder how many people that get into real estate bin it within the first three years because it's too hard and they go, you know what? And she said she's had days where her commission has been bigger than her entire salary. From her previous role. Yeah. Yeah. Like imagine what that does to you. Like imagine how that mm. opens up your mind. Mm. Um, but before she did that, like she didn't really realize it was possible. But I think what was cool about her story is she said that when she started, the owners of the firm basically said, oh, by year seven, you'll be you'll be coasting and yep. then you just, the harder you work, you know, you'll make your own luck there but by, by year seven you'll be sweet. Your so you kind of, yeah. you know, you already know, okay, this is like a seven year apprenticeship mm. and I'm going to be, I'm going to be humming because you're going to start getting the repeat people going, repeats, I'm going to go yep. into another house. Um, but I just thought that's quite a cool, if you can stick it out in any industry, you can still do really well in this country but it's actually having the ability to know that if you do that, then that's where you're headed. And I think having the ability to come back to what we're talking about to ask because you don't know what you don't know mm. and you'll be blooming surprised. And even with this client, we even said to them, get in touch with this person, that person, and even this person who's – and they're complete non-competition threats. Mm. They're highly successful people or people that she looks at as being highly successful. Go and talk to them. What's made them successful? What are their systems? What are their processes? Yeah. You're not wanting to blooming – uh, rain on their par parade or shit on their street. You're just wanting to learn. And most people in those cases would be more than happy to sit down for 15 minutes, half an hour, sometimes even an hour if they're really generous and go, yeah, I'm quite happy to talk about myself because I love talking about myself. Mm. The lad here from Inner Bloom, Ollie, that came in with the coffee before he left, I said, have you tuned in with the crew from a Reaper because they're probably trying to solve a lot of the same problems as you, scaling exactly. the product, you yep. know. Um, and... He had, and I'm just sort of thinking, because I was thinking, if this is my business, who would I go and speak to to figure out what, what I need to solve? And, yeah, we never we should never be too proud to ask, as we always try and encourage people to think about. Interestingly, the real reticular activator system, mate, that, that real estate agent that she spoke about, I saw them on social media last night. No way. And I thought, I'm guaranteed that I've seen this person before, but I just didn't know that I had because it wasn't in the old reticular activator system. So I saw them, 
saw the name and was like, that's who she was talking about. I thought, wow. Within five hours, six hours. Jeez. With someone that follows us doing some work with that real estate agent mm. on their social. And I thought, jeez. Oh. Yeah. So there Siri's we go. listening. Siri, Siri, always listening. Facebook, always listening. Uh, brings up an interesting point around the government asking. Now, the government were concerned about our opinions around uh, moving in and out of different lockdowns and no, they changing. Were, they were interested in our opinions. They were. You and I say me, you. They were interested in uh, the Kiwis, the all the New Zealanders. Oh, I don't remember being asked. Well, you, you weren't asked. You were, uh, you were watched. Uh, yeah. So what they did is they hired a company mm. to analyse social media commentary. Ah, yes. Yes. And uh, people's, the vibe of yes, comments and things, right, about this. which uh, I'd imagine a lot of people would be like, oh, that's disgusting, blah, blah, blah. But actually, well, I think it's actually really smart to get a good gauge of uh, mm. people's, the mood of New Zealand mm. via analysing data, which mm. is just everyday keywords. They're looking for commenting. keywords and comments, eh? Yeah. Mm. And we've been saying for a number of years that, you know, politicians are probably late to the party, but it's actually interesting to see them actually using these tools that are available mm. now. It's like Cambridge Analytica all over again. Yeah. But it's, we're not interfering with an election. So instead of just li living in their bubble, they've then said to an external company, can you please go and get a vibe check from the whole world? Well, New Zealand's our social media. Mm. So it'd be interesting to know how many decisions are built off of the back of them kind of testing what people are uh, thinking. And then whether other large companies are doing the same and you just would have no idea about it. I think a fair bit because not only uh, around the colour of the traffic light in terms of making people feel safe, uh, but also around understanding the cost of living pressures and going, oh yeah, we actually need to do something here so it helps form policy. And lo and behold, what do we get? 350 bucks back. Yeah. And then you think, okay, if the government are doing that, like say Labour are doing that, then if you're a national or one of the other parties, you'd be thinking... Shit, well, I should probably be doing that because we need to be gauging the interest on our announcements and our potential policies if we were to be leaders and stuff. So fascinating that the way uh, people are now using data for different things and being able to collate it all. Mm. Yeah. Insights. But I bet that started with someone internally saying, I wonder if we can get a, uh, a summary of everybody's Facebook comments. And someone would have gone, oh, my mate works at blah, blah, blah. That's mm. what they do for a living. And they would have gone, what? And they would have said, I'll do an introduction for you. And then poof, off they go. Wow, that's quite complimentary of somebody working at government. Yeah. That they can think. Well, or someone's gone to them and said, hey, did you know we could do this? And they said, what? I, I thought that they would have got on their hotline to their consultants, a.k.a. the big four franchises, and said, can you help? Yeah. And they'll be like, we sure can, but that's going to cost you millions the taxpayer is going to pay for that mm. um but again like everybody is out there asking and they are trying to figure things out so maybe suggestion for you write down what things you don't know that you think you need to know mm. and figure out okay who could i ask to help me solve that problem and you might find that it could be that you need some more customers it could be that you need to figure out how to use zero better it could be that you need to figure out how to get a new supplier or Look at the things that you've got opportunities for, look at the things you've got risks for and figure out, okay, what do I need to know to move forward in that space? Mm. And then who, not how it, so it's not about uh, how you do it, it's about who could help you figure out how to do it. Bingo. And that will give you the direction that you need to take to execute. Yes. Mm -hmm. You don't know what you don't know and that's okay. You don't hey, need and, to know everything. And top pointer, folks, LMP at nextadvisory.nz. I've heard those guys respond to their emails. They do every Reasonably now Reasonably timely. Yeah, I uh, just actually replied to a couple of YouTube comments today. We've got some YouTube comments, mate. We do. We do. What have we got going on YouTube? Uh, someone was asking about if you have $500,000 of income mm. and then you had $400,000 of cost of sales, mm -hmm. but you then put $100,000 aside for potential taxes out of that five hundred grand, but then you spent $100,000, well, you spent your $100,000 tax money uh, on other business expenses, would your profit be zero and then would your tax be zero? And uh, I said, yes, yep, you've got 500 grand of income, you've got 500 grand of expenses, you probably don't need to be putting any tax money aside. But mm. uh, Interesting. Yeah. I'm not sure what the context was that they were coming from. but No, uh, interesting. I, I, I'm picking from that alone. It's they have got profit and they don't want to pay tax, whereas profit's a good thing. Yes, well, I was... Yeah, about to say to them, uh, I said, technically this is correct, but why would you want to run a business that doesn't make a profit? Yeah. Hard to do that long term. Yuck. Unless 
you can uh, fund the whole thing through debt or the taxpayer. Hey, the other fascinating thing that came out of uh, the phone call earlier was um, the old whole wages versus salary. Wages uh, versus drawings. Wages versus drawings. Yeah. Sorry, thank you. Um, the uh, client on the end of the phone was like, oh, I thought there were different tax rates if we take drawings oh. rather than uh, wages or salary. Like, no, 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 sunshine. They're all the same tax rates, so it's not about tax, it's about cash flow. And he was like, oh, and I, then my, you know, listen to the podcast. That's that from me, I said, I said, do you guys listen to the podcast? Like, oh, I says, well, we're on Spotify and Apple. Nice. And they're like, oh, wow. And YouTube. So, uh, yeah, and I says, well, jump on, there's one there called Wages versus Drawings, listen to it. Mm. Uh, and that will give you most of the answers. But um, said, are you in KiwiSaver? Yep. Go the uh, the salary route because it's a cash flow decision and their cash flow supports. Yeah. A, uh, a PAY salary rather than drawings. Happy days. I wonder what they'd heard to think that there were different uh, different costs. The other one during the week, mate, that I forgot to mention mm. was a client who had been trying to do zero themselves and oh, do it all themselves. Oh, wow. They want to be an accountant. And I thought, good on you. And then you do the old classic, I'll dig in and have a look here, and it's like, oh, shit, oh, there's about... Oh, jeez, you've gone down the rabbit hole, haven't you? Yeah, eight questions straight off the bat of like, why are you doing this? Mm. What's that? Uh, why does this equal that exactly to the cent? What's going on here? Um, but what they were doing is they were, uh, every time they spent on this credit card, they were introducing every transaction manually into zero. And I said, well, you could just import the the bank statements all Statement. at once. Yeah. And they said, oh, I didn't know you could do that. I, I had to wait for the bank feed to start. And I, oh, great. Okay, so sometimes... Pieces of software are great for us to use, but we don't know how to squeeze the most out of them, right? They're only so, as good as the person using it. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. So maybe look at the things that you're using in your business too, whether that be softwares or things that you're using to make life easier, and ask the question, you know, how could I be using this better? Or even just have a YouTube like of different ways to use that software mm. and see what other people are using it for. We sent somebody this week... Uh, a YouTube video tutorial of, of using Trello. And mm. they wanted to know how to use it. And it's like, well, we do we really need to sit there for 20 minutes like explaining it? It's like someone's, there's a thousand Trello examples. Tutorials, you, yeah. yeah. Get so into the video. You know, dig in and uh, find out what you don't know. But I think the thing is, is make the time to be prepared to learn. Yeah. And that reminds me of a comment that we had on the gram earlier this week uh, from a story that we posted and... Uh, you suggested that the person goes somewhere and reads something and they did not find that helpful at all because they wanted the answer. That's right. So this was a real estate agent who asked... Who's we, not our client. No. They follow Next Advisory and they've asked because we posted something about how the test rates were going... No. Interest banks, rates. Yeah, banks f were seeing or saying that they could see interest rates to moving to... Seven. Seven percent. Yeah. And this real estate agent said, what does this mean, question mark? And I thought, well, a real estate agent, like, you, you really need to know this stuff because yeah. you're advising people, you're in the game. Mm. If it's just uh, someone that's, you know, fresh out of uni or something or never seen an, an interest rate in their life, I thought, well, okay, maybe you'd say, hey, look, this is what this means. But given it's a real estate agent, I thought, you probably need to read this article. So I said, Google interest.co.nz and find the article and read it. Mm. And uh, they said, so helpful, not lol, dot, 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 lol, which means lazy. No, I couldn't think of anything on the spot. Um, nice try. But I, th I said, look, if, if you're not willing to go and learn this stuff, you're not going to be able to help your clients. Mm. And uh, then they said, oh, I said all the best, and they said you too. And I don't know if they meant to the first bit or the second bit, but... Like you say, you've got to actually have a bit of hunger. You can't just be spoon-fed everything. Sometimes no. you've got to have a bit of, in a recession, let's say, you know, you either get hungry or go hungry. And I can tell you that that real estate agent, I just about guarantee you that they will go hungry because they're not prepared to actually learn about interest rates, for, insta mm. for instance. Mm. Yeah, I, spot I mean, prepared to ask the question, but then told, right, this is where you can go to learn more, but then doesn't have the drive, the passion, the energy to then go, right, I need to put in the work yeah. to then do some learning. Yeah. And it's as you, in, in this particular case, learning that's going to fundamentally just help somebody uh, in their particular industry and their clients and make 
a point of difference for them and their clients above all the other real estate agents that are essentially competing against because you're all ultimately fighting for listings. Yeah. Imagine if someone says to that real estate agent, oh, hey, I heard that interest rates are going to go to 7%, and they said, oh, sorry, what, what do you mean? Would you buy a house off them? Mm. Probably mm. not. Uh, before we wrap up, mate, we've finally got our signage up on the wall. We do. And look, for all the feedback that we got, for all the listeners on the pod and those tuning in at home, hi, Grace, hi, Mum, uh, we asked for some feedback, if that was the right size, or should we go bigger? We could probably even... The uh, feedback was overwhelmingly go around. bigger, wasn't it? Hi, hi Jade. Jade. Jade's here. She hasn't quit. It's good. Good yeah. stuff. Good stuff. Uh, and we decided to ignore all advice, and we kept it the same size. And you know what? I'm bloody pleased that we did because it has come up sensationally well. And the feedback from the fans that have come into the office, everyone's great. coming. Oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah, 3D signage. Mate, actually, uh, I forgot to tell you this. So the day they put it up, then I stayed a little bit late. It must have been last Friday, maybe, and did a Keep the Change podcast. And I sat back and I just thought, wow, that's uh, a little proud moment, you know? Did you? Yeah. We touched it a little bit. Yeah. Right. Did you Did you wipe it? No, this sign. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So just, uh, it was good. It's good to uh, just see, you know, another growth journey of Next Advisor. And then the other project we've got written down is to actually get some photos of sort of the growth of Next Advisor and put them along the wall. There'll be some great photos. You know, the first one's going to be the Fiji Fiji Gold one, eh? Brilliant. Yeah. 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 Wow. I think we'll have to do a, a birthday pod on our fifth birthday. Yeah, September. Yeah. But we'll be doing that in another country, surely. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> I was just thinking, I'm like, I've just been invited to a wedding in September, but that's next year. So we're oh, September next year. Got a groomsman for that one. Yeah, oh, are you? Six. Oh, so yeah. it's not, not one of Taz's friends. No, no. Honestly, if I have to talk about weddings, oh, God. Uh, anyway, so let's get off that. But we've also got the wall with the uh, inspirational the quotes. quotes. Yeah, yep, and there's been some great contributions so far. Uh, so anyone that pops into the next advisory office, 48 Grays Ave, level four, office yeah. number 403. Three. Yeah. Yep, come on in. Use the whiteboard pen. Whiteboard, please. Don't use a permanent marker because that will make us cross. Um, add your words of inspiration. You don't even need to bring your own. We've got, uh, we've got them ourselves that we you do. can yeah, sign up to. Uh, before we finish, mate, I got an interesting email this week. I was just thinking about me sign over there in the corner. Yeah. Uh, and it was it's the 16 personalities. Have you done the 16 personalities, the ETFs, the Js and whatnot? Oh, anyway. is that that Myers-Briggs stuff? I th- don't know if it is theirs or if it's kind of like a copycat of it. Anyway, yep. it's 16 personalities. Google that. Uh, I did it a long time ago, mm. and I think I might have mentioned they put you into like a funnel of content mm. every couple of weeks based on your personality type, and it goes through. It's just unbelievably accurate, like just how you pro- how, like how you think about death versus yep. other people. Um, this week. This so for week, when you did it, they didn't have to create a 17th personality? No. Cooked? No, no, <laughs> no. But I think I'm sort of in the category that is pretty... Different. What I've actually found <laughs> is that I forward yep. them to Taz and I'm like, hey, yep. like this might explain why you thought it was really weird that I thought like this, for instance. Yep. Um, and she's like, shit, that is insightful because yeah, there's just things that we talk about and she's just like, what are you up to? Mm. Um, but we, yeah, and then I'm like, well, I don't know, it's just how I think, but then it's just part of my personality type. And anyway, this week's one was about like your working environment and how you'll when you'll get the most work done and literally the day before I've been thinking, right, I probably need to change my morning routine again now that we get back into compliance season mm. to start smacking out my reviews in the morning. I like to do like a little bit of work, then go to the gym, but mm-hmm. I've sort of changed now to just out of bed to the gym and I thought I'll probably change, change that up again. And then lo and behold, it's like, bang, this week we're talking about uh, your personality okay. type and your, your work environment and mm. how you might want to like have some cool signage or something around your desk that'll make you feel like you're more in your little space or something. I was like, oh, yeah, accurate. And then executives are more likely to want to work in the morning mm. and not really take any breaks and don't really see the point of that, just want to go like back to back to back. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, if you haven't done that, I'd highly suggest doing it because uh, there will be things in there that will help you learn more about yourself. Google 16 personalities, is that is that the trick? Yep, that's the one. Righto, mate. You don't know what you don't know, and that's all good. We shan't be expected to know everything. No, look, I'm still stuck on uh, my debits and credits, but I'll get there one day. LMP at nextadvisory.nz if you'd like to learn something from us.